Come unwrap some holiday magic this season in Denver, where the lights are brighter and the shopping is grander, where the season feels a whole lot more wonderful. Discover great hotels and more things to do at milehighholidays.com. Oh, man. If I said it once and I've said it a thousand times, who the hell keeps making these rules? Life is already confusing enough as it is, and everybody wants to talk about their comfort zone, they want to talk about their first world problems, and then they want to talk about their mental health. You know, <laughs> and sometimes in the same damn sentence. It's just amazing to me how really ridiculous people are. But hey, you know, it's not like this episode will get aired anytime soon, but we might as well just go ahead and jump in. Welcome to the J-Man Show here on... J360 Radio! Waiting for mortgage rates to drop could be a costly mistake. Once rates drop, new home buyers will enter the market and prices will soar even higher. At Churchill Mortgage, you can get a free analysis and learn how to avoid the trap of waiting for interest rates to drop. Buy now and refi later at churchillmortgage.com. This is a paid advertisement. NMLS ID 1591, NMLS Consumer Access.org, Equal Housing Lender, 1749 Mallory Lane, Suite 100, Brentwood, Tennessee, 37027. Help spread love and feel the joy of giving back. During the 2023 Subaru Share the Love event at Beardmore Subaru, Subaru will donate $250 to the charity of your choice for every new Subaru purchased or leased. The ASPCA, Make-A-Wish, Meals on Wheels, the National Park Foundation, the Housing Foundation of Sarpy County, or off at Air Force Base's Airman's Attic. Plus, we will give an additional $100 locally to help even more. Go to BeardmoreSubaru.com to learn more. Submit charity selection by 1-12-24. Promotion ends 1-2-24. See Subaru.com for more details. Hey, J360 Legion, how are you all doing tonight? This is J-Man, of course, here for episode 268 of the J-Man Show. Ha! The longest-running J360 radio production so far that introduced you to my greatness. Respect my gangster. <laughs> hey, or you could just at least go ahead and respect my legendary status. You know, I'm only a few million dollars short of being a millionaire, so hey, help me get rich, right? Right? Anyways, uh, nah, nah, nah. Because, see, the thing about it is, it's going to happen all on its own, folks. The way things are going, the way the momentum has just been amazing here for J360 Productions as a whole, it's like, yeah, just have to stay the course. But, yep, we're here for 268. We are still on that road to 300, and I got to let you know on this one, right? Ugh, man. So, this is going to be weird, right? But guess what? No Jams episode this week. Yeah, I know. It's 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 shocking and very, very interesting to me. But, you know, I got an assignment coming up. I got something to do. And this is really important because, like, you know, in addition to doing content for you guys, when I go ahead and I work on other people's events, it's actually pretty cool, too. And, you know, that's just a whole other sector of this great company that we're building. So, you know, one way or another, let's just go get the credentials right. Believe me, if I can help out the community in any sort of way, even though there are times where I'm like, you know what, you might want to ask somebody else, <laughs> I'm doing it right. And I'm very excited for this because the people involved in this event here, they deserve no less. So I really want to go hard for them, and I want to go ahead and make this whole thing work out. And just, it's going to be phenomenal. Duh, because you got me at the wheel, but it's still going to be very phenomenal. But yeah, as I sit here and all that stuff, you can go ahead and close your mouths. There's no Jams episode happening this week. But, but there is one happening on Friday the 23rd, though. And for those of you artists out there that are willing to uh, make the make the choice and put that right step into play, go ahead and submit your two tracks to me right now because the deadline is on the 22nd. So you might want to go ahead and submit them right now to j360productions.outlook.com. I'm just letting you know because, see, the thing is, like, you know the week in between Jams episodes? That is your time to really submit. You know what I'm saying? It's not like about doing that last minute and all that kind of stuff. You know why that stuff happens? We're going to talk about that in this episode. But the point is is that, hey, once again, don't do stuff at the last minute. It's it's not good for you and really isn't good for me. I know like how we all say, yeah, we thrive in chaos and all that kind of stuff. But you know what? If it's that important to you, really be about it. 
submit your tracks in early, get your slot, get your spot. You know, that's the most important thing. But what you do not do is you do not try to reserve any spots and you do not try to annoy the living hell out of me because you didn't do your package right. All right? Trust me on this kind of stuff. There have been many artists that have saw that the hard way. And you know what? <laughs> they totally deserved every bit of the lashing they got. It, it gets like that sometimes. Like, I always sit there and I'm like, guys, I made the rules for jams. I couldn't make them any simpler at this point. Follow through or miss out on the opportunity. And that seems to be an ongoing trend with a lot of people out here nowadays. Like, what I said in the cold open, like, who keeps making these rules? It's very, very interesting to see, like, even the most simplest rule cannot be followed and more problems come out of the woodwork because of it. You know what I mean? Like, communication is key. Now, I know that a lot of y'all are sitting there and you talk about how emotionally draining people are. And you talk about, like, how people's demands are probably unrealistic. Or you talk about, like, how people in general just suck. Well, you might be right on all accounts, but still, guess what? You got to ride the storm. I have said this before, and I've said this. Well, I'm going to keep saying it because you know what? You're not getting it right. So I'm going to keep saying it until it really gets stamped on the inside of your head. Be stronger than the opposition. Be true to yourself. Like, remember how you carry yourself and how you best represent yourself well. You are more than your ailment, and you know your resolve is true. Then you stay true to it. Like, you know how I am with jams all the time or how I am with any J360 production. You really got to follow through on your things. Now, there are moments where, like, there's some J-Man episodes that get lost in transition. There are some J-Man episodes that, you know, I make and then um, I don't really, really find them presentable. But the thing about it is, if one way or another, it's not just about me. It's about you guys as the listeners and those of you that enjoy the content. What do you get out of it? You know? And then at the same time, you're probably looking forward to it every middle of the week or in this case, like everything's just randomized right now because we're working on assignments and special projects here at J360 Productions. But you get what I'm saying. Either way, you're still going to get a J-Man episode, whether it be like 268 or 269 first or whatever. You understand what I'm saying? But things happen. But the thing about it is, is that, you know what, I know what is what is best and i know what is best in my company that i built so i gotta go ahead and follow through on that and you know nowadays it's not really time to be slouching because in about a couple of weeks or two or so let's see what what is it on the time stamp right now hell in about a week or so it'll be monster fest time it'll be all about monsters and from the last week of september all the way to the first week of november nothing but creeps ghouls and monsters urban legends and then some not to mention some movie reviews in addition to some awesome, awesome antics by the J360 Productions team and myself included. And we even have a few special projects in line. And not only that, like J360 TV will be taking center stage on a few things as well. So, you know, it's a very big deal. And it's like the biggest event here in J360 Productions next to uh, Gemiversary and certain other special projects. But yeah, that's kind of what it is. It's like a make or break right now. But as we are doing make and breaks, and as I am doing assignments and all, I'm very, very happy about the way things have been going. Like, the momentum is, like, rid ridiculously good, and as it should be. But when you think about it, when I talk about, like, being stronger than your ailment, like, you know, the, you know that moment where you just don't feel like doing it? Right, I totally get it. Not doing anything is... Is, is is it's sometimes it's very very peaceful there's nothing wrong with not doing anything unless you got something to do and it's in the back of your mind all the time and it's like man am i gonna hurry up and do this or what like like is this gonna get done and you would want that to get that project whatever is like kind of a red flag right now you would want to go ahead and get that done because you never know if you're gonna get the time to do it I don't know where people in modern America, and I've said this before, I've said this about, like, when it comes to people in general, like, you might have a lot of people that agree with you, but a lot of people agree with the wrong thing simply because it sounds cooler, you know? Pay attention to the way people are. Like, like really pay attention to the talk in town sometimes. Not to the point where it mind-numbingly affects you, but to the point where you really, really, really decipher what is in that message, and when you're really looking at what's in that message and it doesn't come out sounding good, chances are it might not be a good message. Chances are it might be like something that 
you would think it's food for thought, but it's kind of like, you know, say you're eating healthy and then you eat something that counterbalances your whole diet and then you're screwed up for the whole day. That's what it's kind of like. You want to pay attention to the world that you live in. And indeed, like uh, some of that mal uh, malaise, yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds like a dressing, but it's not. Even though at the same time, it's not the same function I'm actually saying it for. But, you know, misinformation at best. People chew on that all the time. And once again, because it sounds funny, it sounds cool. It's going to be a lot more popular than something with a reasonable message. And that's what's so sad about it all. And the, see, the thing is, with that being done, it seeps down. It goes into every piece of communication we have. Whereas, like, you know, when I created this show, the show wasn't about popularity, about views. It wasn't about all that kind of stuff. It was about saying what needed to be said. It was about standing by your message and seeing, like, what is this right here? Question things that are, question all popular things if you can, you know? That was the whole point. It wasn't about being liked. It was about I had something to say. So, yeah, it get like that sometimes. But I, I just say, like, yeah, you know, there needs to be somebody with a different voice speaking out there. It needs to be like, you know, popular opinion, while popular, isn't always right. And I'll have to make a note of that in other episodes as I uh, keep going on the road to 300. But like I said before, it's not about that. I wish people would actually understand what I was coming from. But, you know, a, a long time ago, didn't somebody say that having a difference of opinion is similar to a punch in the face? Who the hell wrote that rule? Who keeps making these rules, man? You know what I mean? It doesn't even sound right. As a matter of fact, I'm trying not to cuss because I'm trying to be a better person in my life. But at the same time, it's like, you know, <laughs> y'all push me to it, man. You know what I mean? Yes, I have the responsibility of making the final decision of saying a, you know, explicit message right now. But the thing about it is y'all get me to it. And it, it, it's just like, who keeps making these rules? You know, it, it doesn't, it, 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 it smells like it sounds and indeed, it does sound like that. It sounds like what birds do to my car at 9 in the morning. And, you know, at the same time, it's like this. My car is so damn fantastic when I clean her off. But I'm really getting tired of these damn birds. I hope winter comes in, freezes all that crap up. Not on my car. <laughs> That's a joke on the house. But you get what I'm saying. Like, deep down in the inside, like, I sit there and I think about it a lot, folks. I think about it a lot, like, such as... <sighs> It's so stupid. It's so stupid to hear that kind of spiel. There's a lot of sayings that people hold dear to their heart that are really, really dumb. You know what I mean? And that right there is definitely one of them. Now, see, I'm one from the generation that you're allowed to solve your disputes in a fight. Like, you know, in the 90s, you didn't have all that stuff where people were like, Oh my God, we got to do something. We got to be more involved in the students' lives. Like, we got to stop them from fighting. No, 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 no. We had recess and we could fight. Matter of fact, disputes would often be solved under the dome. <laughs> you know what I mean? Y'all know the dome. If you've ever been on a playground, you know the dome where you can climb into and everything. That's where disputes get solved. Fight it all out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, especially if somebody don't like you and they go ahead and they try to you know, take stuff from your lunch or anything, or they try to interrupt your snack time, yeah, you have every right to go ahead and drop kick one of the little bastards. But it's like this. At that point, you've been punched in the face or kicked in the mouth, something like that. You've had to have some physical, you know, altercation. And I'm not talking about when, like, your mom's disciplining you or something like that. I'm talking about, like, when you really could fight back. <laughs> okay. Like, ah, uh, uh, it, just, it just drives me crazy when I hear that. Having a difference of opinion is similar to a punch in the face. You've never been punched in the face before. You've never went through any sort of problem like that. Most people that sit there and say that kind of stuff to me are just as bad as those other people out there who try to say, um, you know, use their horoscope to justify their stupid behavior. Or go ahead and try to be like, you know, um, if you don't depend on me, you won't be disappointed as much. What the hell kind of puss out defeatist statement is that? You know what I mean? Like, a long time ago, before I met my significant other, I actually was courting somebody who even said this. And I was like, so let me get this straight. You don't even bet on yourself? I'm betting on the relationship and all this kind of stuff, but you don't even bet on yourself. 
Yeah, you know what? Your parents were probably right. You are a giant disappointment. See, the thing is, is like, when it gets to that point, folks, don't regurgitate this stuff without really knowing the crux and the meaning for you and seeing if it, like, really applies to what you're saying. Because otherwise, you just sound like a real jackass. All right? And the truth is, is that, like, going back into the first example here, you know, it's not a, it's not equal to a punch in the face. Mature up and take it, okay? Not everybody's going to like you. Not everybody's going to agree with you. And not everybody is going to think that what you said was really clever. It's just amazing because some of these uh, would-be writers out here, some of these journalists, if you will, they're not really journalists. They're, they're a bunch of people, out, a bunch of hacks, I should say, trying to get popular based off of, hey, guess what? This is what people in the world are like now. Yeah, people in the world are really, really sick like this. But I want to say, like, you know what? Have a difference of opinion. If you guys shape the culture like me and other content creators out here do, don't be on this stuff just because it's cool and it makes you feel relevant. Like, really have something to say. You know, like, really mean something. And it's so bad because none of them have any meaning. It's just about who to please over there over in the marketing department. Or not marketing department, payroll department. Even then, they, they're getting dicked too. Because there's always somebody making more money than somebody else working there. It's so sad. But at the same time, you realize, like, I always say, like, who is making these rules? Because, like, half this stuff is nothing but pure, unadulterated, not unadulterated, unmitigated, <laughs> not unmitigated. Um, see what I'm saying about using the right words for meanings? All this stuff is just pure confusion gone wrong, unchecked, if if you will. And, you know, life is confusing as hell. It always has been. It's already strange enough without meaning, and now you know all this other stuff going into play because nobody wants to be responsible. People want to be responsible at only times when it's convenient to them, and it's usually when a convenient time to win. And outside of most people, like, you know, me, as I create this show for all of you guys, I'm responsible for its context, right? Yeah. Or, like, say, like, um, any of the other shows that I make, I'm responsible for, like, it being out there. And I don't have a problem with that responsibility because I have already paid for all my future sins. See, things like that. <laughs> I'm sitting there, I'm like, you know what? That's a little offbeat. That's insane. I allow it. Or, like, if I'm working with Space Force on, like, any of his Summer Bash stuff, I'm like, you know what? This is wild. This is crazy. This needs to happen. I'll allow it. Or I'll look over at somebody else that probably wants to do a special project for Halloween, even though I've been doing the Monster Fest for four friggin' years, and then some. I'm a, I'm going to be behind it because, you know, I'm responsible for it. It's one of those kind of things. But, you see, once again, not everybody can be a leader, and not everybody is ready for that kind of leadership ideals. And you see, the thing about it is, when you're a leader, yeah, you do make rules, but you got to be bound by your rules and your convictions on these things. And people don't know how to do that stuff unless it really, really counts for them. And then it's questionable about, like, whether they're even – being responsible at that time. It's like when you're in a communication with anybody, you want to be in the moment of that communication, even if it's boring as hell. Even if it seems, even if you don't like the person, you still should hear whatever sort of things they got to say and see if it's constructive. But if there's nothing good from that department, you know, you probably wouldn't want to listen. It takes a conscious effort, but I'm talking to those that really, really want to try to bridge the gap on things, not just light bridges on fire. I love the funny part when people try to say this. You know, they use a, they got to say it about that now. Oh, you don't want to burn your bridges. But then, like, now you got people going, you need to light that muff. You need to light it up, fire, but make it blaze up. Yeah, don't pay attention to none of that stuff. It depends on the situation. I mean, like, once again, that sounds really cool, right? I mean, like, trust me, I, I'm notorious for burning bridges. I'm notorious for just kicking doors down and leaving and all that kind of stuff. Much like Godzilla, I wake up, see things I don't like, go ahead and do some epic stuff, and then leave things in tatters. That's what I used to do. But you see, as I made changes and all that kind of stuff, and then, like, I'm building the network, I'm building the tribe, I'm trying to get in goods with other people who create things, you know, there's a lot of differences there, and that's okay. And then the truth is, some of them people might not like me, and I might not like those people, but it is what it is. You know? It's not selling out or anything. It's just being like, you know what? Let's see what that mindset is. Let's see where all that stuff comes from. And then that's how you have the communications and all. Because you know what? Hey, let me just tell you, life, it ain't just about you. And I know, it's kind of weird coming from me, considering that we're on the solo show right now. 
But, you know, you got to really think about it. And you see, like, communication issues just come out of the wazoo. And I always talk about, like, the rules of engagement. Like, a long time ago, it used to be a little easier to meet people. It used to be a little bit more easier to actually have a conversation without, you know, being judged and pre-picked for all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, your confidence is already kind of shot. So you're sitting there questioning yourself the whole time. Did I come across right? Did I come across too strong? Was I being empathic? Was I doing all these things? It's like, damn it. Stop. You know, because, see, like, what do they say? Like, when you have um, conversations, like, like. Well, let's see, how many relationships that you got going on or how much, like, and I'm not talking dating relationships, I'm talking, like, camaraderie and everything else. Like, you have, what, equal to or less than, equal to or more than uh, communications or conversations going on within that. It's something like that when it comes to groups, you know what I mean? So, I, you know, I can't think of it off the top of my head right now, but if you really understand how this stuff works, you know what I'm saying. But I'm just like, so, like, you know how you have that one-on-one -on -one conversation and stuff, and then you have another conversation because of the stuff in your head, and you're hoping that all that stuff is going through so somebody really understands where you're coming from? You don't want to be in a room where you're questioning yourself at the same time questioning another person, okay? You don't want to be at that point where you start being like, you know what, damn, I can't believe I said that to her. Oh, man, I sure hope I'm funny. Oh, man, I sure hope I'm this and that. that, that that's too much work. That's the most draining crap ever. And I wish people would actually understand that. I, I mean, like, you know, I had to tell my lady one time, like, you know, in this relationship, when you go through uncomfortable stuff, I mean, you're not going through it alone. I'm uncomfortable, too. Who, who's to say that I'm not drinking a bigger shot of malaise than you are at this point? You know what I mean? And, and it's like that because I'm actually in love. That's the difference. But <laughs> if it was like some sort of casual chat, I wouldn't give a damn. You know? But that's, once again, that's that moment where you're being in the moment. And see, a lot of people, they, they stumble at themselves. They do all those kind of things. Where it's like being in love and being a simp are two different things. Keep that in mind. People go into that over-infatuation way where they go ahead and spend all their hard-earned money on this person as a way of trying to get their attention and all that stuff. Yeah, that's simping it up royally. And not, not to mention, like, being there every waking hour that person is or really, really doing the our nice guys thing where they get mad about the person not talking to them at that time. I, I, once again, like, that is a whole source for another episode. But what I'm talking about tonight is usually communication issues and like you know like how you work that whole thing out i try to go ahead and you know even out the way the track is going and it's just like ridiculous man like somewhere along the line it's it's a lost art because you know like there are people out there who in their infinite ignorance hate small talk and it's like you know what small talk yeah i get it like sometimes it could be like the most random thing like yeah how's the weather hey cowboys ain't doing jack Hey, guess what? You know, <laughs> I was laughing at Dallas all damn night when Prescott got hurt. Makes me sound like a jerk, don't it? But see, the thing about it is you would want to come and try to talk to me about that, wouldn't you? You know what I'm saying? You probably want to come and try to approach me, especially if you're from the NFC East, because you know damn well it's about Eagles, baby. And you know we're going to get that Viking ass soon enough. We're going to stomp them in the mud. And you see, I probably set myself up for a lot of things, but now you want to go ahead and hold me to task for it, don't you? That's the beauty of small talk. That's the beauty of attraction right there. And you see, the thing is, like, when people tell you they don't like small talk, that's a friggin' lie because, needless to say, you have to use small talk. It is, like, one of the most, one of the most important things and important skills to have. Because say, like, if you have an idea for a movie or you have an idea for a play or, you know, you got that elevator pitch. Well, you know, elevator pitches, once again, they're not really long, so you're going to have to master small talk in order to get interest generated it's one of those important skill sets folks it's kind of like hey you know if you have a brand that you're trying to promote and you know that you need some sex appeal and you want to talk to any of these uh cosplayers about it you guess what you're gonna have to do a little bit of small talk and a little bit of persuasive you know persuasion i should say oh that's funny too let's talk about persuasion for a minute especially when like other people have a problem with persuasion which at the same time i tell them hey why don't you shut up because here's the <laughs> See, that's kind of persuasive, isn't it? But hold on a sec. Like, 
<laughs> and this is funny to me because I, I seen this in my early days of building J360 Productions because there were people that I wanted to be interested in the company. You know what I mean? And this is before like we got to this point. I was like, you know, I utilized a lot of persuasion for proposals and all because that's persuasion. It is the point of the whole thing. You got to go ahead and make this appealing and let people know exactly what they're getting into. In addition to what's in it for them, you know, you got to make it appealing and tell what you bring to the table. That's what being persuasive is. But a lot of people, once again, think it's another source for grooming and it's another source for, you know, manipulation, gaslighting and all this other stuff, which it can be. A lot of these things can be used for evil intent, but not all of them. And you see, the funny part is, is like when people nowadays don't have no median, they go from zero to 100 real fast and then assume that, oh, you're, you're just trying to convince me. You're just trying to manipulate me into something. It's like, no, no, I, I, I'm interested in your art and what you do. And I want you to help me build this brand because that's the way we can help each other out and make this grow into something. And you know what I mean? And this is after when you pretty much sent them a proposal. You pretty much tried to persuade them, see what it was all about. And for some reason, like I said, a lot of people, they so damn smart about everything. They dumb in practice. Because they're not listening. You got to listen to what the offer is. You got to at least know what's going on. You know, like I tell a lot of people who really are introverted and they have no confidence or... Well, you can be introverted and have confidence. Keep that in mind. But, you know, there are people out there who don't make the push for things, but they want to do things. And I, it just irritates the hell out of me because I'm like, you know what? If you really want this crap, you got to go for it. And you see, the thing is, like, a lot of people are like, I'm so shy, Jay. I'm so this, Jay. I'm so that. You know, I, I sympathize. I do. But you see, the thing about it is you feel like you have a choice. See, my black ass don't have a choice. I don't have a choice for a lot of crap. Like, I can't be shy. I'm six foot three. I can't be shy. I, I mean, I'm out here with 50 pounds of equipment or more strapped to me, not including my dick. And you're going to tell me about, like, all of your personality problems and stuff. I got to be, like, they're built like a tank or an infantry soldier going ahead filming stuff all the time. with dealing with people who probably don't want to be filmed or probably more uncomfortable as I'm uncomfortable. And the thing about it is, what the uncomfortable is, <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but, you know, that, that vest they have strapped to me with the camera connected to it, like Steadicam, that stuff starts to chafe. And I got to be there for at least well over the hours you're there. So think about it. Yeah, yeah, you know what? As I was sympathizing, I, I take it back. I'm mad as hell. You better stop your stuff. <laughs> it, it don't make no sense when it comes to people like this, you know? But once again, like, if you really want something, you have to fight for it. And, you know, like, when you do pers proposals and all that kind of stuff, and you're trying to persuade, not convince, but persuade, and highly suggest, that's not bad. That's not bad. It's not forcing you. Forcing you is me saying, like, something like quid pro quo, or saying, like, if you don't, blah, 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 I'm going to blah, 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 and all that kind of stuff. That's what you're thinking of. And I'm not trying to extort anybody as I build the brand. And I never did then, and I ain't trying to do it now, but I know a lot of people will come out of the woodwork and they become a part of it, and they squander the whole relationship because they don't understand what give and take is when it comes to that kind of stuff. I had people try to take over. I had people try to act like they could do my job, and you know what? They fail at both because, needless to say, you're not ready for that. You're not ready to be in the captain's chair if you can't handle what the captain has to deal with on the daily. It doesn't matter what gender you are. It doesn't matter how you feel about yourself. What matters is... Can you do the job at that point and at that time? And it's all about decision making. And those of you that go to the, um, uh, um, 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 uh, um, and let me tell you something. Umming is just more or less like, you know, it's a little, little bit of a speech impediment, a little bit of stuttering. You know, I stutter and flood my words too. I'm not going to throw too many stones at you, but I'm going to throw some. Uh, here's how that goes. If you can't make decisions like that, you know, then you should not be worried about leading anything right now. You got to make decisions. You got to think on your feet. And like when you do things like persuasive or you do things like argumentative and all that kind of stuff, like those things have meaning. That's why they're called articles of communication and sometimes the rules of engagement. 
And like, you know, half the damn time we sit here, we worry about like, are we reaching the right people and all that kind of stuff? You don't really know because all walks of life are out here. But if you, but here's the thing, you will know when people start talking to you and you start seeing like in different sort of ways about it. Like, you know, the way like people talk about flirting and the way people talk about all this other stuff, it's like a game, if anything else, you know, because even though people say it's one way or they hate the stuff, it's like this. People are going to talk to you anyway. People are going to ask you if you're single. People are going to ask you about your job. They're going to ask you about personal stuff they're gonna ask you for your number I, i'll never understand why people do this kind of stuff and freak out and fall apart during these things i mean maybe it could have been a traumatic event maybe it could have been like you know something that led to something else and it wasn't good for you i totally get it but once again if it's something that's really innocent and really honest once again you have to make that final decision and the other person that's there they have to respect it. And I get it. There's people out there that don't respect that stuff. There's people out there that think that they have a chance and they keep going on and on about it. Or they go ahead and they become, well, you know, I'm a nice guy. You should love me because I'm a nice guy. You should be happy because I'm a nice guy. But I had did that stuff. Now, if you got to do all that, you know, <laughs> you ain't getting nothing, son. Or should I say some of you ladies out there, you're not getting anything at that point because, well... You just showed exactly how many personalities are in there. And some people aren't interested to see the rest of them. So, you know. And not only that, if you got to say that you're a quote, quote, nice person, or you got to say that you're quote, quote, no, nah, you you regular asshole in real life. Let's just be honest. <laughs> you know? And, and not like, and not like say, like some of us on these podcasts that do a whole lot of snarky um, commentary. Nah, you above and beyond. You are so big on the level, you're probably hanging out with DeSantis and Governor Abbott. Little things like that. Uh, but, you know, it's just it's so weird. It's so weird where we are as a people anymore. Because, the you know, when you're a kid, you're in school institutions, or institutions, I should say, but school is an institution, so stay with me. The point is, like, when you go through school... You're supposed to learn these formatives so that you become a person of society, right? You're supposed to learn how to write these things. You're supposed to learn how to talk. You're supposed to learn how to be a part of something. But then you realize that there are a lot of things in school that they don't want you to talk. They don't want you to do a lot of things. Or they go ahead and they check you on something and they don't tell you in the most empathic comfortable way me going through school man i deal with a whole lot of that crap like you know it's to the point where i sat there and i thought about like my social issues and all that kind of stuff luckily i outgrew a lot of them and i took the time to make the changes because dare i say it but quite a lot of people around me you know they well we know there's a problem but we don't know if we'll ever get to that problem and i was like you know what i'm done waiting on you assholes i'm gonna go ahead and handle my own problems yeah, see, uh, the way I am about my resolve and how I solve things is because, you know, I, I didn't have a choice. I had to do something about it. Because if not, I could see it now if I wasn't so adamant and rebellious about a lot of things and the society left on automatic. I probably wouldn't be able to do this stuff as we speak right now. You understand what I'm saying? I probably wouldn't have my girlfriend. I probably wouldn't be working with Marco and Lucifer. Or I probably wouldn't be dealing with Al. And you know, if I'm not dealing with any of them, chances are I'm not meeting you all. Yeah. I'd probably be still working at that stupid go-nowhere job during the beginning of my job history. But we're then sitting there saying, what am I going to do next? And even then I'm thinking it because I probably wouldn't be able to speak it. But you see, the thing is, it's like, you know... I like who I am, I believed in myself, and I pulled myself out of a whole lot of problems because guess what, society as a whole is a friggin' failure, and I had to rely on me. So it's little things like that. Even though there are times where I come across as real abrasive and all of the other things that people try to label me as, there's a reason why I am the way I am. And you know what, in a way, you all kind of created me. But you know what? <laughs> Much like Frankenstein's monster, you gonna get this ass whooping. You think about it. You think about it. Stuff don't make no sense. It just I, I I don't understand people and their logic. And it's not even logic. It's fallacies going unchecked on everything. But you know, like I said, you got to know small talk. You got to know how to persuade. You got to know how to present yourself well. And here's the thing. Here's the number one thing that a lot of y'all need. Okay, confidence. 
You need to have your confidence in yourself. Now, there have been times where I question myself on a few things, but then guess what? It doesn't last long, and I'm usually back to being who I am. And even then, a better version of who I am. That's my responsibility and my gift to the world, to be a better version of myself, especially as I lead J360 Productions, especially as I work on event videography, especially as I do all the things that I said I was going to do, and once again, making some great track marks as I do so. It's little things like that. Like, even then, as I'm sitting here, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to be on the road a lot soon. I'm going to have to figure out a way to make the portable setup sound a lot better than what it was. And you know what? I think I found the tool I need, so I'm making an executive decision and go ahead and handle that. And we'll see what we do for the next episode when it comes to, you know, doing the show on the road again. But it's little things like that, folks. Like, you, you know, you got to question things. Like, like that. What, what was that one thing? What was that one statement that, that deals with performing arts and that I really hate? <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. I just don't care. People used to use this one to justify their way that they relate in the world. All the world is a stage and all, all the ones in, inhabited are merely players of the... Shut up! All right? Do me a favor. Shut the hell up. Don't ever say that again. You know why? Because here's the thing. It's my show, and you're living in it. Got it? This is my world, too. To be perfectly honest, as, as crazy as I am and as outlandish as I can be, yeah, at least I'm using the stage. You just standing there sitting in the, in the wallflower wishing that people would notice you. Mm, why don't nobody notice me? Mm, why don't nobody see me? Mm, now, will they like me back? <laughs> see, that's too much. You're not even on stage at that point. You in the backstage. You're in the backstage having the 20 conversations with yourself. You know, it's like this. Look, people are going to, like, there are people that made fun of me, too. And, you know, in turn, I made fun of them back. And not only that, there's going to be people out there who wish they could get in a fight with me. And I will happily answer the call. I'm ready to do this. We're going to slug each other out. Take them down. Take them down. You know, things like that. The list goes on and on, folks. That's just the way it is. When you sit there and you, like, worry about people liking you, once again, that is another thing that takes too much damn time out of your life. I, I, I can't I can't be in a relationship if I'm sitting there every moment being like, damn, I hope she loves me back. Man, I hope she still loves me. Man, it's only been like, you know, uh, an hour since we last talked. I got to see if she's still with me. What kind of friggin' insecure crap is that? Or, 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 or look at my friends and all, and the people in the jam fam stuff be like, dang, I hope they still respect me. Oh man, I hope they submit tracks to the next jams episode. You know what I mean? I mean they, you know they don't really seem to care about anything. I, ah, fuck them then. And they, I said fuck them. I said fuck them. I didn't say it. I didn't say it all. <laughs> yeah, I covered that up pretty well. But the thing is, is like you know, what I'm saying is, is that you yourself. These are really the core points of you working on the relationship with yourself. The communication issues that exist within you. Just allow yourself to have some fun. Breathe, damn it. It's not that damn serious. Now, there are people out here who have a whole lot of money that you're trying to impress, I suppose. There are people out here, like on that Shark Tank show and all that kind of stuff. See, that's a little different. But you got to be in the moment. And then the thing is, who knows? The personality quirks that make you might be enough. Nobody ever thinks about that. But, you know, when something is out here, and you know communication is the most... One of the most important skills that you as a human can have. And that there's something out there that makes you question why. Question it. Yeah, question it. It's not the same as a punch in the face. You need to question that stuff. You need to look at it and be like, hmm, that doesn't make any damn sense. <laughs> Sounds familiar, don't it? But yeah, like let, let your inner J man out. And, and while you're using that, make sure you use it within reason and in a concentrated form. Because I'm not liable if you get arrested or serve some time. Somehow I'm still a semi-law-abiding citizen. But I want you to remember that. <laughs> well, yeah, definitely remember that. Don't do what I do. But I want you to remember, like, be confident. Be true to yourself. Like, build your brand. Speak your mind. Like, you, you want to put on a concert show. I mean, then you need to talk to people. 
You want to go ahead and do these things, then you need to talk to people. You want to date that girl, you need to talk to her. And I don't mean like, within five minutes and then like throw the number down and stuff like that. That just depends on the conversation and if she's getting your vibe or not. And if she doesn't get your vibe, well, hey, guess what? We just do the dance for another one later. As simple as that. Like, I, I, I mean, like, we all had the, the image in the mind of skipping in the field with that person and stuff. Even though I got two left feet. I'm, I'm just kidding. I know how to use them, too. No, I <laughs> slam both left feet into people's faces and stuff. But, no, 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 no. It ain't about me at that point. What I'm saying, we all have those images and stuff like that. But the best way that your crush could end up being your bae is really just to talk to them. And don't really go, you know... Don't really get to that point where you think things are immediate. Just talk. Just do it as passions of time. Treat them like people. See what they're all about. It's all those kind of things. And don't be like, I'm this guy. Hey, actually, did you know, like, um, this is way, way, way back in the day. But, you know, a plus-size model that I was talking to one time tried to use that against me. Try to use the nice guy <laughs> argument against me because I never mentioned a word about me being nice. You know, if you want if you want my real example about being nice, and this is for all you new J-Man fans out there, I'm not nice. I'm a good man. I'm not nice. The hell with that nice guy crap. And I'm going to tell you why. Because, you see, the problem with being nice is, is when people sit there and they try to use that as a justification to be an a-hole to you. Okay? That's my point. This plus-size model wanted to be an a-hole to me about it. And I said, why don't you just shut up? You know, your whole idea, and she's like staunch feminist, so I really gave her something existential. I told her, you know, your whole feminist thing, how is it going to get anywhere without the men there to bully around anymore? And she, she couldn't say nothing at that point, and I said, yeah, exactly. So, And guess what? You're fighting with the wrong one, because I'm not going to be bullied by anybody, especially a pretentious hoe like you. And you see, at that point... I didn't need to respect anybody, and I didn't see her any more different than a garden tool. So, yeah, I pretty much used it right. You know, if anything else, well, you know what I mean. I saw her nothing more than a garden tool at that point, because at the end of the day, they're not real people. You know what I mean? Anybody who goes as far to try to undermine you using your gender or whatever, or any of these memes floating around here, they're not real people at that point. You can go ahead and hit them with anything. And even then, you know, she'd probably be digging in the ditch of somebody else. And the truth is, is that, you know, probably is. It was just a worthless conversation with an otherwise boring person. And the sad part about it is, it's like, that's the most reaction that you're going to get out of a lot of these clowns because they don't know how to act when people aren't all about, you know, the boasting. But you see, when you're confident, though, you don't really have to boast. When you're confident and you're true to what you're trying to do, you can get stuff done. Now, a lot of you introverts out there, just get active about things. You know, passive is your nature, and I, I get it. I get it. But you see, the thing about it is, closed mouth don't get fed. You need to go ahead and do something a little bit more proactive than need be. All right? Step it up a little bit. Know how to switch gears because, oh, yeah, also, yeah, this is me helping you. And I'm doing it all for free. I should charge you, but I won't because, you know what? The hell with that. Here's how it goes. Being too passive is like a one note. When people know how about that one note and they know how to play the one note on you, that's how they know how they can get stuff from you. But if you got multiple gears like J-Man, <laughs> yeah, baby, it's a little different. See what I'm saying? You got to know how to do these things a little bit more effectively, efficiently, and you got to go ahead and communicate. And if you look around at what the hell exactly is going on in the world, nobody knows what the hell they're doing. So you got a shot. You got a chance. Like, you realize, like, for a lot of the people that I know, I took chances on getting to know them. Because you know what? It was going to be rewarding, and it would be completely sad if I didn't. I can only imagine all that kind of stuff. I can only imagine, like, what that alternative universe would look like. I mean, at that point, then I am a loser. At that point, then I did not go as far for things. And would sit there and talk about entitlements. That's a damn sad way to go. So I would never promise that for any of you. And you see, J-Man's not a loser, so and you know this for a fact. You got to go ahead and fight for things. And don't say I didn't give anything back to you, because usually I do give back to the community and those that really pay attention to the J-Man show. You can be a lot better than what you are. You're just going to have to go fight for it. You can be the ugliest fool alive. 
But people will like you because you know what? You don't let it stop you. Don't don't pay attention to society's rules here. Like we covered earlier in the beginning, like when I said, like, who keeps making these rules? Jaded, tired, pathetic individuals do. And you're not pathetic. If you're in my if you are in my group, if you are in the J360 Legion, you are a fearsome fighting machine. You are not pathetic at all. Because I see something in you. Go ahead and kick a whole lot of ass. And take no prisoners. Make them feel the way they need to feel. Well, uh, hold on, hold on. That that <laughs> that right there. Um, <laughs> okay, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll put a question mark on that one. But here's the thing. Go for the goals. All right? Even as I'm doing what I got to do, you know, I'm nowhere near finished yet. Never will be, I guess. I get the feeling that this show will probably run forever, even past my untimely death. But I hope you all learned something from it. You get what I mean? The communication issues at the wazoo, and they can all just die down simply by just actually having a real communication. By actually having a real connection and talking. But hey, you know what? What do I know, right? Having an opinion is equal to a punch in the face, and I'm kind of tired of throwing lefts right now, so we're going to go ahead and close this one up. You all take care of yourselves. I'll be back with 269. We are going to go ahead and take the show portable. And God knows what we're going to cover, but I'm sure it's going to be something to deal with mainstream media. Anyway, this is J-Man signing off. Take care of yourselves. Peace. Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on ChumbaCasino.com. I looked over at the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino-style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's ChumbaCasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. VGW. Void or prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere, and each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime time anywhere with daily bonuses that should brighten your day a little actually a lot so sign up now at chumbacasino.com that's chumbacasino.com no purchase necessary btw void were prohibited by law see terms and conditions 18 plus